All right, Billy. Ready to give this thing a shot? We're gonna be trying out that whole psychic knock game thing that's so popular on that creepy pasta website. So I, I did the whole like texting the call me uh, what is it? Call me four six nine on the, the Snapchat thing, and they sent me the they sent me the instructions. Let's say a uh, large group of people connected in some way, friends. Us. Okay, we uh, all have to agree whose door to knock on. That's gonna be the one here in the crypt. Cool? Alrighty then. Uh, so we all have to wear black. We're good. We gotta sit in a circle and join hands. Okay, so I have the Google Maps thing here of the uh, on how to get over to the door. We have to be in complete silence. You have to concentrate on this map, okay? I don't want to hear a word from you. Many hours later. <laughs> Is that enough? It works! Oh, uh, alright kids. Yeah, hopefully you were a part of that too. Are you visualizing the knock? Tonight's story is actually all about the uh, psychic knock game. This one's from Chris Maxim. Ah, here we go. If you're like me, then you've probably been perusing the creepypasta site over the past few days and noticing the countless posts pertaining to the psychic knock game. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm getting particularly sick of them. I want my regularly scheduled stories back, anything that doesn't involve that damn Snapchat ritual. I tried contacting the site through Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, but to no avail. Each and every time I was left on read. <laughs> Typical. Still, I wasn't about to give up. I decided to take matters into my own hands. I thought it best to shame the story in an effort to get the posts taken down, or at the very least, make them stop, whatever way to shame the ritual, than to disprove it altogether. Show the creepypasta fandom that it was a bunch of malarkey, something that wasn't worth reading, or at least not worth numerous posts about. I play the game, film my experience, and post the video all over, calling out the story on its obvious bullshit, simple, or so I thought. I faced a big obstacle in initiating gameplay. The first step called for gathering a large group of connected individuals, but I lacked the resources to do so. Most of my good friends had moved away, either out of town or out of state. There was no way they'd make the trip just to help me make a point on the internet. Family was out of the question as well. They're a bunch of normies, for the lack of a better term. They would neither understand the concept of the game nor reason for me to attempt to disprove it. I'd be judged and ridiculed for ever partaking in something so silly and trite. In light of all that, I hatched a plan. I connected with callme underscore 469 on Snapchat, and I sent a message, asking if there were any solo instructions for the psychic knock game. My hope was that whoever owned the account, more than likely the writer of the first post, would be intrigued by my query and create a list of steps for would-be players who had no friends. Another twist in the game's fabric, so to speak. Screenshotting the response and filming the subsequent video would be enough to convince folks that the game was a load of crap. Just as good as following the original post's instructions to a T. That was the plan. A few hours passed with no reply. I was beginning to think that I was embarking on a fruitless endeavor. But a familiar sound lifted my spirits. Bing. There was a snap from Call Me 469. Upon opening the notification, I was greeted to an image of a handwritten note. More specifically, a set of steps titled Knock Game Solo Play. <laughs> Success. The only thing left to do was play and shame. I was one step closer to fixing one of my favorite sites and bringing it back to its former psychic knockless glory. Victory was just around the corner. I screenshotted the snap and read aloud to myself. Step one, wear black. Step two, choose a door to knock on. Step three, sit cross-legged on the floor. 
Step four, place a picture of the door in question, as well as a map to its location, directly in front of you. There must be complete silence. With eyes shut, concentrate on the map and visualize moving to the door. While visualizing, raise your right hand and knock in the air three times. The steps were very similar to those in the original post, save for the group aspect. In addition, there was an eerie postscript at the bottom of the note. Solo play is not recommended. A great deal of energy is required to knock. Without a group, you put yourself at risk. Tread carefully. Ah, a little zest of danger to discourage me from playing. That's a nice try, OP, but I don't scare easily. At this point, I still had every intention of following through with my plan and ending this guy's continuum of ritualistic nonsense. Nothing. Not even a well-placed warning would keep me from seeing this thing through. I chose the perfect day. My stoner roommate was out of the house, and my noisy neighbors were at the beach. I'd be able to perform the ritual in silence, just as the instructions called for. The last thing I needed was some douchebag in the comment section of the video saying, I heard something in the background, that's why it didn't work. Yeah. After uploading my experience, I wanted there to be no doubt in anyone's mind that the game was utter bullshit. No backlash, no analysis, and absolutely no debunking my performance. I needed a clean run, through and through. I threw on a black shirt, sat down in my living room, placed a photo of my own door on the floor in front of me, as well as a map quest from my house around my neighborhood, back to my house again. I decided it best to use my own door as the target as this was the only way that I could collaborate with my findings in one seamless video. After visualizing a nice stroll around the cul-de-sac, I pictured the entrance to my home and raised my hand to knock. The game was afoot. I was able to knock the required amount of times. However, in between knocks, things became a bit troublesome. I'll describe the experience below. Knock one. Through only imagining the events, I felt my skin make contact with the door and, in turn, heard the loud thud of a knock. Despite the game's rules, I opened my eyes and looked ahead, astonished. I used my free hand to angle the camera directly at the door as I continued. Knock two. I shut my eyes once more, visualizing the same scene, and motioned my hand accordingly. Again, the wood of the door met my knuckles and a loud knock reverberated throughout the house. I opened my eyes, but was now greeted with a blurry sight. A wave of drowsiness came over me as if as if I'd popped a couple of Benadryl. With it I saw spots in the air, little blotches of light burning into my retina. Knock three. With what little strength I had, I made the final knock. The sound that followed was jarring. It wasn't louder than the previous ones, no, just different. I had a strange, almost metallic reverb and lingered for far too long. It lasted for a solid minute before dissipating. A continuous dissonance that followed through every crevice of the room, causing my skin to crawl. At this moment, the room spun and my stomach turned, just as severe dizziness took hold. I saw the door open. Though I couldn't discern the action source, before I knew it, it was lights out. When I awoke, the door was still open. Not to my neighborhood, but to a forest of sorts. Perplexed, I walked out, noticing a particular dirt path lined with overarching trees leading from my doorstep into a depth of the woods. Ominous, yes, but I didn't feel as though I was in any immediate danger. The atmosphere of this place was anything if not tranquil. A bizarre yet peaceful escape from real life. In truth, I had forgotten all about the psychic knock game, as well as the events that led me to that moment. I was in a strange stupor, a euphoria, brought on by drugs unknown. In this state, the only thing I felt was a growing compulsion to move forward. Uh, I placated this sensation and braved the wilderness ahead, officially beginning my journey into the forest. I walked for what seemed like hours, though time felt irrelevant in whatever realm I was in. 
I eventually came to a small clearing at the forest edge, where it became apparent that I wasn't alone. In that clearing was a man facing away from me, before him a set of doors standing upright of their own accord. Though my absent-minded state may have been to blame, I still felt no danger, only calm. The man turned around and gestured for me to come closer. I obliged, walking through a space between two of the doors. I was able to get a better look at the man who was dressed in old-fashioned attire, a white button-up, black pants, suspenders, dress shoes, and a skull cap. Hanging from his side was the chain to a pocket watch. Where his facial features should have been was a pit of darkness, a swirling vortex of black energy. This was alarming, but euphoria kept me from feeling unnerved. The man spread his arms, reaching towards the door, and then spoke with a gravelly, artificial voice. What would you like to know? I didn't respond. Instead, I looked at him, mystified by his presence. He spoke again. Pick a door. Learn. Come back. Repeat. He stood there, motionless, waiting for me to humor him. I was still confused, but did as he said, walking over to the closest door and then looking back at him. Enter and you shall see. I looked back at the door in front of me, grabbed the knob and took a deep breath. Still calm as could be, I swung it open, walked past the door frame, and entered a new world. From this point, things got weird. Super weird. I entered and exited each and every door there, traversing strange locations as I did. One door led me to a retro boxcar diner flying through space. One led me to an old antique shop filled with items that harbored unique powers. Another brought me to a town completely frozen in time. I've never experienced anything like it before. Calling it surreal would be a severe understatement. For one reason or another, I was being allowed glimpses into places, worlds, and universes I'd never meant to see. A mortal walking amongst the heavens. In the short period of time I was granted this power, I felt... Eternal. Upon exiting the last door, the unusual man offered me one last bit of wisdom. We oversee. We correct. We control. There was a brief pause before he finished his sentiment. Now you know. The swirling energy of his face vanished, revealing a blank slate of skin, void of expression. The doors were next, disappearing one by one as the forest around them transformed into a pitch of blackness. Before long, I could see nothing, nothing but darkness. The euphoria subsided. Sweat dripped from my brow, and my breath became rapid and arrhythmic. I didn't know what was happening at the time, but I realized I was waking up. I jolted to life, opening my eyes as wide as possible, surveying my surroundings. I was in a hospital bed, hooked up to life support, an IV, a breathing tube, the whole nine yards. In the room was a nurse. My family and even my stoner roommate all seemed ecstatic that I had woken up. A doctor walked in and undid the breathing apparatus, allowing me to speak. That's when I learned everything. Apparently, my roommate had come home to find me unconscious in the living room, face down on the hardwood floor. He couldn't wake me up. He called 911 and then my parents. I was rushed to the hospital where it was deemed that I had suffered a head injury and succumbed to a concussion-induced coma. It was also determined that I was severely dehydrated and vitamin deficient. The head injury came from falling over and passing out but the cause of my nutrition levels was unknown. Luckily, after getting the appropriate fluids, I was able to fight my impromptu slumber and wake myself up. All's well that ends well, I suppose. And that's everything that happened. You might think I don't eat properly, don't drink as much water as I should, wound up in a strange dream after passing out from exhaustion. Those who think the game's fake will continue to think this. Those who think it's real will subscribe to the idea that I didn't follow through due to my accident. And the site will keep pumping out psychic knock stories until the cows come home, right? Not exactly. See, I had my camera the whole time. I filmed every moment from the start of the ritual up to my meet with a strange man. It wasn't a dream. You can watch the video here. 
Some parts aren't salvageable due to a bizarre electrical interference, but I pieced together enough to prove my story. See for yourself, make your own judgment. Oh yeah, don't play this fucking game. If you know what's good for you. No, I very well could have died. You've been warned. Hey there kids, and happy October! It's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and I just wanted to tell you a couple things that are happening this October that haven't ever happened before. First off, if you take a look at the channel, you'll notice that I'm currently live. That's right, we started up doing a Halloween horror radio program. That means 24-7 without interruption, you'll be hearing Creepypasta stories, read by yours truly. And as well as a few other guests that we've had on the channel before. The other thing are Halloween exclusive t-shirts. These t-shirts are available in the Mr. Creepypasta link down below in the description. Actually, at any point if you want to check out the description, feel free to scroll down and see what kind of cool stuff's going on down there. Oh, and of course, the Halloween countdown starts on the 18th. Look forward to seeing you all in sweet dreams.